Okay, guys, my favorite time. It's time to do the math. It's time for us to get mathematical, pull out those pencils, pull out those calculators, and let's get ready to knock this formula out. Once we know the math, once we've done the math, once we know the formula, then we can start figuring out how to improve these numbers, and if they're already good, how to make them even better. So this formula consists of the sum of the beginning receivables and monthly credit sales less ending total receivables. Then you divide that by the sum of the beginning receivables and monthly credit sales. And then the next one is less the ending current receivables and key in on current receivables. Okay, so once you divide those two numbers, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna multiply them by 100. Now, if the percentage comes back and it's close to 100%, then that means that the collection of the accounts receivable from customers was most effective, right? So you're trying to get it as close to 100 as you possibly can. Okay, so let me break down these definitions really quick. Let's, let's slow it down, right? Let's just slow it down. Let's start talking about terminology for a second just so you guys understand the equation and then we'll bounce right back into that equation again and we'll do the math together and I'll throw in a little example. So let's start off with beginning receivables. What is the beginning receivables mean, right? So I said beginning receivables on those two equations that you have to do first before multiplying it by 100. The beginning receivables is the company's open receivables at the start of the month. It's also the ending total receivables for an organization from the previous month. For example, if a business had an ending total receivables of 30 million on February 28th, the beginning receivables from March 1st would also be 30 million. Okay, so now let's get into monthly credit sales. What's monthly credit sales? Monthly credit sales is how much money is made via sales in that month. Okay, so here's the differentiator in the two equations on that division line, right? So ending total receivables is all open receivables, including current and overdue receivables. So it's the entire spectrum. So when we say ending total receivables in the equation, we're talking about the whole shebang. Ending current receivables is the, next, is the next one that you need to know, and that one is only current receivables. It's not overdue receivables, it's not everything, it's just the ones that are current. And this is the key to figuring out what that differential is in that percentage so you understand, remember, this equation is showing you what was the total amount that could have been collected and what did you actually collect and the differential is the percentage. So this, these words are very important and these phrases are very important, so key in on them. So here's an example. Company A has 40 million in beginning receivables. They have 30 million in monthly credit sales, 50 million in ending total receivables, and 30 million in ending current receivables. So first, you would go to beginning receivables, which is 40 million. You would add the monthly credit sales, which is the 30 million number. You would subtract the ending total receivables, which is 50 million, and this would give you a total of $20 million. So then what you would do is you would divide it by the beginning receivables, right? So next equation is the beginning receivables, which is the 40 million. You would add the monthly credit sales, which is 30 million. And then this time you would subtract the ending current receivables rather than the total receivables, right? So it'd be just the ending current receivables, which was 30 million. And what you would get is $40 million. You would then multiply those results by 100 and it would give you a 50 or 50% 50 CEI. And what that should tell you for company A is that company A needs to look at their billion collection process.